the boundless Canadian prairies. In winter, cold, bleak, and white with snow. In spring, glistening with the dark water of melting snow, a bright sun pointing to warm days ahead. In summer, fields green with growing crops, a monument to courage, hard work, and perseverance, promising a bountiful harvest to come. In autumn, a golden prairie rewards the farmer for the year's hard labor. Fields of grain stretching mile after mile as far as the eye can see, and the whole countryside dotted with thrashing machines belching chaff into the wind. The vast prairies were all but empty at the turn of this century. Then Sir Clifford Sifton started a vigorous campaign to settle this empty land with people from all over Europe. Great numbers of strong men in sheepskin coats came out of the Ukraine. Courageous women with kerchiefs over their heads. The Ukrainian Canadians now represent the largest Slavic group in Canada, numbering almost half a million. Through the troubled centuries before they migrated to Canada, they miraculously kept alive their language and traditions. These peasant folk from the overcrowded farmlands of the Ukraine were attracted by the offer of three homesteads of 160 acres. Whole families crossed half the European continent, the Atlantic Ocean, and 2,000 miles of North America to reach Western Canada. They found here in the sweeping Canadian prairies a rich land with far horizons that reminds them of their beloved homeland. At the recent festivities celebrating the 50th anniversary of the coming of the first Ukrainian to Canada, this early settler shows his granddaughter a group of his descendants, some 90 Canadians who are enjoying freedom and prosperity in their adopted land. The prairie is dotted with their low log houses covered with white plaster. Often with thatched roofs, they look as though they had been moved intact from Central Europe. The Ukrainians brought their Byzantine architecture with them and have built their churches with the mosque-like domes and cupolas all over the prairies. Many Ukrainians follow the Greek Orthodox rituals, others the Roman Catholic, and some belong to various Protestant denominations. They have found in their new country complete freedom to worship God as their forefathers did. Following the ancient traditions, they celebrate in Canada, just as in the old country, their special feast days, such as the Christmas Eve supper, which falls on the sixth day of January, according to the Julian calendar. The carolers, representing the three kings, angels, peasant women, and shepherds, come singing the ancient carols. Many of these ceremonial songs come down from the pre-Christian era. On Jordan Day, the 19th of January, a cross of ice is erected in memory of the baptism of Christ in the Jordan River. Easter time means gaily colored eggs, decorated with elaborate designs which these artistic people brought with them as a part of their rich heritage of native arts and crafts. The traditional designs and special stitches with which their costumes are embroidered have symbolic meanings that come down through a long past. The Ukrainian expresses his love of beauty in the great variety of costumes of the people as well as in the literature, dances, and songs. In Canada, too, as in the Ukraine, on festive occasions, the girls braid garlands of flowers into their hair and wear their old world costumes with traditional designs embroidered on blouses, jackets, and aprons. They sing their favorite songs, folk songs dealing with all the experiences of life, love, joy, sorrow, devotion to church and country. With patience and loyalty to the old traditions, the elders have taught the second and third generations to love the beautiful songs, costumes, and dances of the mother country. The children begin at an early age to practice the favorite dances. Here, their dancing is simple, but charming bird dance in which they represent the crane. It is called the wattle.
salsa chop is much more difficult than the crane dance and requires long practice and remarkable agility to perform the steps correctly. The dance is a popular folk expression the world over. Through this ancient art, the dancers express a great variety of moods and emotions. Ukrainians take their dances with them wherever they go. The people, young and old, are eager to preserve them for future generations. One of the most characteristic dances of the Ukrainians is this Cossack war dance, in which the dancer expresses the excitement of battle. The difficult squatting dance step called Prizhatka requires much practice for the young boy. This is strictly a step for the male dancer. Katharina is a favorite dance with all Ukrainians. The girls dance with dainty flow movements in contrast to the vigorous steps of the male dancers. Another dance, the Kolomeka, is a dance of whirling, stamping, and merrymaking.
Now the Kula Maker is danced by the men and women together. This Cossack dance requires the wild, strong movements of a warrior. His amazing agility wins the admiration of all. The love of dancing is as old as life itself. Through its spontaneous expression and its power to pass over the barriers of creed and race, it joins us all in mutual appreciation and closer understanding. <laughs>